Yay Networks. 13 has been my lucky number for a while. Like, it's always a sign of good things to come for me. This is 13, a Taylor Swift fan podcast. Breaking down every song, every Easter egg, every era, and every theory. Hosted by the biggest Swifties. Nick Adams, Anna Casiejos, Amy Nichols, and Lacey G. Welcome to 13, a Taylor Swift fan podcast. My name's Nick Adams. So Anna, I'm Amy. And I'm Lacey G. And today we are breaking down the second song on Speak Now, Taylor's version. We're going to be talking about Sparks Fly, a classic Taylor Swift song. Yes. Doesn't it just put you in a good mood when you just hear the very beginning of this song? And drop everything now. (laughs) Drop everything now. Me, How, me, oh, that's great song. That's, yeah, yeah, I know. So, okay. So, Speak Now came out, the original album, in 2010. But Taylor had been performing Sparks Fly, like, at live concerts and stuff for a couple years before the album came out. And she performed it specifically, like, live somewhere uh, at a live show. And... Fans loved it. And I mean, you got to think about social media back then was not what it is now. Mm -hmm. And so there was this video of her performing this song, this like unreleased song. um, And then somebody uploaded it to YouTube. And so fans would, I did, we, you would download like the video file as like an MP3 via like LimeWire, like whatever. And so like fans always had this song. It was like just an unreleased Taylor Swift song. And then whenever she was gearing up to release Speak Now, she was on like a Ustream or something. And there was a fan that asked like, oh, what about Sparks Fly? And she said, well, the fans actually loved it so much that, yeah, Sparks Fly is on this album. So Swifties knew about Sparks Fly before it was on Speak Now because she had just performed it. But the lyrics were different. Yes. Yes. She wrote the song whenever she was 16 and performed it in 2007, four years before it would get reworked and released due to popular fan demand. And um, she did change up some of the lyrics. She said on Ustream, I played that song at one or two shows and you guys really jumped on it and made it something I had to put on the album because you guys really showed interest in it. Guys, is this once again something where we're like kind of foreshadowing where Taylor's pulling something from the vault (laughs) and putting it on an album? Because the fans asked for it? Yeah, she wrote it before she released her debut album. Yeah. This song, she'd been sitting on this great song. I know. I wonder... I mean, have you looked at the original lyrics or have you heard the the demo? Um, So in the original lyrics, the chorus is the same, but the verses are different. I think that it's interesting that this is the first that we know of Taylor changing lyrics on something. And now that's something that she's sort of known for and stands by. And we really, really respect that. I do have some different lyric changes that she's made that we'll discuss later. But it's, it's just nice for her to... This one, I feel like she just tweaked it and made it better, in my opinion. She didn't have anything controversial, yeah. but she grew more and her vocabulary and her writing skills. And so she just tweaked it to make it, in my opinion, a better song. I mean, now, but of course, that's a better song. That's a classic that I know. Yeah, that's one that, that yeah, that's one that you know. Mm-hmm. I did see before, before Speaking Now Taylor's version came out, I saw Swifties on Twitter being like, I dare Taylor to drop drop it with the original lyrics oh you know, my just, god like fantastic just to like throw people off because yeah. they'd be like wait what <laughs> like if you if they didn't know about the original yeah. demo that would have been cool as a bonus song or a vault track yeah if if we could have gotten both versions it's still get a deluxe or some other version of it mm-hmm. yeah well it's actually funny because there was a sparks fly cd single um during the original like speak now era and i was looking about how it was sold on her website, and it was for a limited time. And so it was, like, just Sparks Fly and, like, a little CD. But there was, like, a package option that you could do. Oh. And it, you, you would get, like, the Target Edition Speak Now Deluxe CD, a free pair of headphones, and then your choice of Sparks Fly, The Story of Us, or Mean as CD singles. And then which one would you pick? If that was us today. If that if was you us had today? A, right now. What were the options? Sparks Fly, The Story of Us, Mean. I would pick The Story of Us. Or same. Yeah, I might pick the story of us too. Yeah, just I I mean all of them, but I think Sparks Fly. Yeah. Yeah. But I I thought it was funny because I mean this was like a package bundle option you had in 2010 on her website 
And I just want new Swifties to know that this has always been the way that she does things. <laughs> She's always <laughs> you know what I mean? extra When she did like Midnight's, like four different variants, buy all four to make a clock, and everybody was like, oh my God. She's so greedy, and it's like, no, this is Taylor Swift. That's just what she That's just what she does. She's the, she's the richest woman for a reason. It is a business. Genius. It is a business. She is a genius. That's just the way it is. And then how much would that stuff go for now? I mean, if someone has all the original stuff, that's now considered, like, a collector's item or something, well, right? someone posted the Speak Now wrist bracelet thing on eBay, and they're going for, like, almost 100 bucks. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I was looking because... Well, Amy and I just completely separate topic, but we were talking about the reputation, the orange vinyl. There's like there was only a limited amount. There was only like fifteen hundred copies like pressed or something. And I was looking to see how much those were worth. And a reputation orange vinyl could go anywhere from a thousand dollars to four thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah. And I imagine, you know, as she continues to get more and more successful and we get reputation TV, that'll be worth even more. Yeah. So I do wonder what these would be worth that. Did you look it up? No. I was gonna say, wait a minute. We have made fun of Anna for so long for buying every version of everything. Huh. You bought how many folklores? Eight. She bought <laughs> eight folklore albums. She she should have a whole room at home dedicated to all of her stuff. But the joke's on us, guys, because one day Anna's going to be rich. She's going to be able to sell all of that for millions and millions of dollars. She wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Both of you to think I would sell that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I'm looking on eBay right now, and the Sparks Fly CD single is going for... Well, this is well. Okay, it's marked. It's marked for three hundred and thirteen dollars and thirteen cents. Wow, cute, love adorable, it. love it, love it. All right, should we start getting into the lyrics here? Yes. Okay, here we go. The way you move is like a full-on rainstorm, and I'm a house of cards. You're the kind of reckless that should send me running, but I kind of know that I won't get far. And in the original, same thing, um, full-on rainstorm, house of cards. But instead of saying, you're the kind of reckless that should send me running, she says, you say my name for the first time, baby, and I fall in love in an empty bar. In an empty bar? Was she 20 at this point? No, 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 but that's the thing. So this song is widely rumored to be about Jake Owen. Uh Did you guys find that? Yes. Yes. Um, Because country singer? Yes. Yeah. Huh. Because back when she was 16 years old, she performed with him in a bar. Duke's mm-hmm. Bar in Portland on Halloween mm-hmm. in 2006. And then she started playing her, like, this original version of Sparks Fly, like, shortly after. And so with the bar, that connection, people just kind of assumed that it was maybe about him. And I actually, I found an article because he did an interview with People Magazine, like, two weeks ago, like, earlier this month. Yeah. And they, they asked him about it. And it says, speaking now to people... Jake Owen said, it's a great song and the speculation has always been funny to me. I'm sure Taylor probably laughs about, laughs about it all too and I'm happy to even have my name in the discussion around it. And then he said that he's known Taylor since she was 16 and is a big fan. He said she's an amazing girl and an amazing artist. It's been incredible to see how she's grown as a musician and what a global phenomenon she's become. I have his initial reaction. Oh, from back then? Uh-huh. What did he say? So that's Jake Owen now. That's Jake Owen two weeks ago. Yes. And no disrespect to him, I don't listen to country music often. I'm not familiar with him. I know the name, but I'm not familiar with him. But his reaction now was, you know, what an icon, what a global phenomenon. Then, and he said this jokingly, he said, I'm glad I'm the reason she sold a million copies this week. Oh, my God. (laughs) But jokingly, I feel that very, very jokingly, not knowing this guy, but I mean, it, it says the quote he jokes. Is he, yeah. Is he laughing now? Um, <laughs> no, now he's he's flattered. <laughs> yeah, not <laughs> flattered. Like you said, he's glad to be part of the conversation. Yeah. So if she wrote this in 2006, right? It, song, or, yeah. yeah. So she was 16, he was 29. Oh, wow. And she described in a MySpace blog post and about her, associated it's with just him. It's a crush. A crush. Yeah. Right. An yeah. innocent crush. Because in yes. interviews, she admitted that the song was written about fantasy, not that something actually happened. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and I think when the lyrics changed, maybe that was when it was focused on the certain crush. I was Googling, like, what color is his eyes? I think they're green, and the lyrics are originally brown. Mm-hmm. So I think maybe that is. I mean, I, I looked at pictures. I'm like, well, they're kind of hazily, so they could be green or brown in the pictures that I'm looking at. <laughs> But that's what I absolutely love about this album is how carefree and yeah. she is about everything and how 
someone can touch her and she has this whole fantasy right. about their their whole lives together. Or Jake Owens flashes foul at her in a bar mm-hmm. while she's performing and, and sparks the eye. Yeah, and he's the big icon and she writes this. So it is it is tongue in cheek. It's total fantasy. There was nothing. Yeah. yeah. Well, and she's like said that too that it's it's very whimsical. It's it was originally supposed to be titled Enchanted was the original name of the entire album. And like yeah, you have Enchanted, Sparks Fly, like it is that kind of just fairy tale fantasy. Yeah. Yeah, that's and that's I mean, that's the magic about it, right? Which which is awesome. And then yeah, I saw I saw that a lot of people just even refer to it, not even just as a crush, but like a celebrity crush. Mm. You know, it's like it, yeah, it's like when I was a teenager, no a song about Nick Jonas or something. Yeah. You know, like which I probably did at some point. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's great. The hidden message is Portland, Oregon, is where she opened up yes. for him. That's well, the location. Well, then there's our answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. All right, the song continues, and you stood there in front of me, just close enough to touch, close enough to hope you couldn't see what I was thinking of. That it does just give very, like... Have y'all ever had nice feelings? Like, you're standing next to a crush, and you're like, oh my gosh, he's right there. But it's like, I don't want him to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. I mean, yeah. You, like, in, like, middle school, you think about, like, you know, you just have a crush on, like, the boy or girl, and you're like, math class, but, you, like, you don't say anything. Yeah. It's just, like, a little crush. It's not like you yeah. want anything to actually, you know, come from it, but it's kind of kind of cool to have that little, like, motivation of, like, oh, I'm excited to go to math class today to see my crush. Yeah. It's adorable. <laughs> That's really cute. I know. And in the original version, she said, So reach out open-handed and lead me out to that floor. I don't need more paper lanterns. Take me down, baby. Bring on the movie score. Because my heart is beating fast and you are beautiful. What does take me down, baby, mean? I think I think it's taking him down. <laughs> I think it's like football. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I love it, though, but, but like listening back, it's like because that was like in the second like verse area and the cadence is completely different mm-hmm. than the cadence that we have in the song now. And it's it throws me off. Yeah. <laughs> and then we get into the iconic line. Drop everything, everything now. now. Meet me in the pouring rain. rain. Kiss me on the sidewalk. Take away the pain because I see sparks fly. Whenever you smile. Oh, my gosh. I think we nailed that. I I think we nailed that. I do love that whenever she played this on the Eras tour, she started with that. But she didn't start from the beginning. She she, she announced, she played it when she announced Speak Now Taylor's version in Nashville. That's like, as if I was there, I remember it perfectly. Uh, Drop every, oh, my God, what a moment. I'm so jealous of everybody that was there. Like, super happy for you. (laughs) Has anyone ever had an actual romantic moment in the rain? I don't okay. think I've ever had a romantic moment in the rain. I've tried because one time it was raining when Ryan and I were like walking somewhere. And I was like, stop. Maybe we should kiss in the rain because it's so romantic. And he said, absolutely not. Let's get inside. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought you had a make out in the rain. Yeah. Wow. Get out in the rain. Was it, were sparks flying? Uh, yeah, Sure. I mean, that doesn't sound very convincing, does it? Yes, it was. I just don't want to go to scales. <laughs> Tell us more. No. Nope. <laughs> Tell us with your information. Well, I was in Paris and um, it was raining a lot. I even had to buy a nice umbrella for Paris. Um, nothing romantic and hot in the rain, though. I was just walking around with my umbrella. <laughs> took, some cute, took some cute pictures. <laughs> yeah. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes you might feel a little certain in life which path you're going to go. Am I making the right decisions? Am I making the right choice? Sometimes it's just nice to be able to talk it out with somebody. And that's why I really appreciate our friends at BetterHelp. Whether you're dealing with decisions around careers, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life. So you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Can I say what I really love about BetterHelp is that People are going to find any excuse to not get therapy. And so they make it as easy and as convenient as possible. This is entirely online. So you do it right from the comfort of your own home. You can do it while you're driving around in the car running errands if you want to. So BetterHelp is there for you whenever and wherever you are. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, you should try giving BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, like, like Nick just said. And it's really great to find the therapist that matches you. You get matched with a licensed therapist. You can switch at any time. Um, I've done that before. I was matched with someone who I feel like I feel like I wasn't opening as much as I should have. And I just went in, switched therapists and had a great experience. 
Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Taylor Swift fan today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Taylor Swift fan. All right. And then we're going to keep it moving on in the lyrics here. She goes on. Get me with those green eyes, baby. As the lights go down, give me something that'll haunt me when you're not around. I think she actually says that when you're not around. <laughs> I, I, I do appreciate that in Taylor's version, she kind of kept that she little country, country twang, twang. Yeah. in that part specific. Yes. Like, ugh. Now, how much is she going to keep that country twang with debut? She has to. She has to. She has to. But it does bother me that people still say, Oh, remember whenever Taylor did have a country accent and now she doesn't anymore? <laughs> like almost insinuating she's fake or oh. she faked that accent for country. When truth of the matter is, your 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 vocab your accent evolves according to Absolutely. where you live. And Definitely. you're a performer. Yes. And I also think it's just the style of the song. It's going to make you slip into that. I mean, if she had a country accent and she was singing, shake it off, <laughs> that wouldn't be, that's not a fun pop song. Right. And it's you not know? It's not a fun country song to be like, our song is a slam and screen. Right. Our song is a slam and screen door. Yeah. I mean, not like that. That was aggressive. But like, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I mean, even Beyonce was Sasha Fierce. Like, she becomes a different person on stage. Yeah. Like, you're it's totally like, grooming. And right. you're allowed to change. You're allowed to change. She doesn't just live in Nashville anymore around country artists all the time. Yeah. I used to sound completely different whenever I lived in Georgia. And yeah, I did have some training because of the job, but um, I, I don't sound the same. The minute I get around my friends, I do. Yeah. The minute yeah. I get back it home in Georgia, back. I get super twangy. And then it takes me like a week or two to let it wear off and then I'm back to me again. Yeah. You guys, this look, version of me. I'm going to Nashville in September. And I'm so excited because one of my friends is planning the trips and I'm not a planning type person, but I said, I have one singular request. Bluebird Cafe. Bluebird Cafe. Yeah. And I was like, we don't have to eat there. Like, we don't have to go in. I just want to like breathe the same air. Yeah. So it's on the itinerary. Excellent. I'm going in December. My niece, Rihanna, is getting married. And <gasps> last time, insane? last time I was in Nashville, um, it was a huge snowstorm and everything shut down and I didn't get to go around everywhere. So I miss Bluebird Cafe because it was closed. This time, I'm going to go. Good. I'm going to go. I'm really excited. Breathe the air. Yes. So in the lyrics, when she says, give me something that'll haunt me when you're not around, what would something like that be? I don't know. Is she what just... would he give her that haunts her? Is it like a smile that she can't stop thinking? Yeah. About? Like, I think like a memory. Yeah. You know, okay. because before she's talking about the pain. So, I mean, being haunted with the pain of him not being there anymore. Mm. Right. Because she knows that it's not going to end well. Also, she's foreshadowing haunted the song that's in this album. Exactly. It was the it was the first Easter egg. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I see sparks fly whenever you smile. Mm -hmm. All right. She continues. My mind forgets to remind me you're a bad idea. You're a bad idea. You touch me once and it's really something. Ooh. You find I'm even better than you imagined I would be. I'm I love that. I love that line. I'm even better than you imagined I would be. You already know that it's going to be great, but I'm even better than that. I'm on my guard for the rest of the world, but with you, I know it's no good. Yeah. He's just, you should let her guard down. <laughs> and I could wait patiently, but I really wish you would. Drop everything, everything now. Meet me in the pouring rain. rain. Kiss, Kiss me on the sidewalk. Side Take away the pain, cause I see sparks fly whenever you smile. <laughs> Every time. You can't, like, just say drop everything. Yeah. That's, like, wrong. <laughs> I so love this song, and I was really hoping that, I know that Taylor Swift aligns her schedule according to our recording schedule, obviously. Which is so nice. Yeah, because um, we've lined up perfectly with releases and different stuff. So um, I'm a little bit disappointed that she um, didn't play that song this weekend. Sparks Fly? Yeah, I know she's already played it before, but still, it would have been nice. Wouldn't that have been a nice surprise? Like, here you go for the 13 podcast. I know this is the episode that they're breaking down next week for y'all. 13 podcast. Here you go. Sparks fly. Could you imagine, like, I know we always talk about, like, oh, I wonder if Taylor listens to the podcast or she knows about it. We like to think that at least she knows about our existence. Could you imagine if she actually ever, like, 
said it out loud, not only would I just absolutely drop everything now, fall to the ground and lose I'd my mind. I I'd think I'd throw up. Lacey's head would explode. <laughs> I think, but I think like also I would get really nervous of suddenly like every everybody knowing about it. Because right now we're still kind of under the radar yeah, a little bit. Uh, you were a little underground. Yeah. So I that would scare me just a little bit. Okay, y'all. It's a lot of pressure. I'm about to get ridiculous. I had the most ridiculous thought the other day because I'm I'm really into TikTok. I'm really into like bettering yourself and manifesting and that kind of stuff. So TikTok has led me to believe that money isn't real. And I truly believe that that money is not real and it doesn't really matter. Um, also, I'm horribly broke right now because I subscribe to that theory. But I thought I was like, what's the only thing that's holding us back from Taylor? Money. And money isn't real. And we're going to get the money and we're going to get to meet Taylor. That's the only thing that's holding us back from Taylor. I feel like I feel like we could rule the world with more money. <laughs> I really do. I know how we can get the money. We're going to put it in the bag and we're going to steal the key. Uh... And then we're going to hang out with Taylor. Yay. I and love it. I love it. But I, but I was really thinking that the other day. And then I had to talk myself down from that. But I was like, that's because if ideally, if we had money, we'd be following her around. We'd be going to all the heiress tours. Mm-hmm. We'd be doing everything. We would be at that status. But um, I'm going to keep working harder so we can get us that money and get to that status. We all will. Mm-hmm. OK, so I do love this part of the song where it kind of like I run my fingers through your hair and watch the light go wild. Okay, I had an unheard lyric, actually. Um, I have to. Con- I have a confession to make. As we go through Speak Now, Taylor's version, I have various misheard lyrics that I did not know about until now. But you had the booklet. I know, but I haven't looked at the booklet in 13 years. Mm, okay. You know, I just, have a, I just have a couple of misheard lyrics. Um, one that I'm very embarrassed about that we will get to when we get to that song. Um, you. <laughs> but in this one, it's I run my fingers through your hair and watch the lights go wild. I thought it was in light and watch the and watch the lights go out. Mm. Well, not that bad. No, that's not, not bad. That's no, 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 not that bad. I have a worse one. So you have one that like completely changes the meaning of the line. No, one that's just a just like really dumb. It's like, how did you hear that? And B, it's like, are you a Swifty? Why you got to be so clean? <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? No, I have a misheard lyric. And I'll tell you what it yeah, is. Don't tell us now. No, no, no. I'm not going to say what the lyric is, but I'll tell you that it's in the song Long Live. <laughs> oh, I thought we were thinking the same one. I have a embarrassing misheard lyric in Back to December. Oh. And we'll be doing that one next. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we'll get to that one next. It was so bad. Worse than Starbucks lovers. But at least that was like, a, like everybody misheard that, right? Yeah. Like it's power, really common. It's power in numbers kind of thing. Yeah. And not just like. I'm a diehard Swifty, but I had a wrong lyric and long live out of all songs. But now when you hear Blank Space and I hear the line, it's like, how did I ever think it was Starbucks Lovers? But now it long list of ex lovers. Like I'll try and sing Starbucks Lovers. It's like, it doesn't fit. Yeah. Why did we think that? Because it's crazy. Because we were silly. Yeah. Silly gooses. <laughs> there is a lyric change here, though, from the original and Taylor's version. So um, speak now. She says, just keep on keeping your eyes on me. It's just wrong enough to make it feel right. That's the version that we all know. But what she said in the original way back, she said, just keep your beautiful eyes on me. Listen to this, y'all. Gonna strike this match tonight. Match. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. She was burning down the lover house and ready. (laughs) Wow. Her mind. Mm. Let's see. We did. I run my fingers through your hair and watch the lights go wild. Just keep on keeping your eyes on me. It's just wrong enough to make it feel right. Yeah. And lead me up the staircase. You won't whisper soft and slow. I'm captivated by you, baby, like a fireworks show. And then the lights go on tour. I love that part. And in the original, she said, I'd love to hate it, but you make it like a firework show. Oh. So she wants to hate them, but it's so captivating to watch yeah, you. It's so yeah. pretty. Yeah, I just want to sit here. Cool. Yeah, I want to sit here and watch it. Yeah, I mean, when you just think of just like a celebrity crush, you're like, oh, I just, uh, hmm. I love it. And then she goes into the chorus again. Drop everything now. Meet me in the pouring and rain. Right now? Drop everything now. Drop everything now. Me. <laughs> Oh, oh really? <laughs> he keeps going, going, going. Uh, 
She goes on to give me with those green eyes, baby, as the lights go down. And then she wraps the whole song up and the sparks fly. Oh, baby, smile. And the sparks fly. Mm -hmm. The end. I really wish that I could have gone to the Speak Now World Tour. Yeah. I, man, I have such FOMO, even though it was like, you know, a long time ago. But the official music video to Sparks Fly is just concert footage. Mm -hmm. Like, really, I mean, high quality concert footage. Um, And it just, I watch it and it just, I just have FOMO. I just wish I was there. And let me tell you something that I learned at our um, era's pre-party that we had. Now, I know... I'm supposed to know absolutely everything about Taylor Swift and I don't and just shame on me for that. But I didn't know. I did not know. I saw this beautiful girl wearing a purple dress, total Speak Now era, and she had something written on her arm. And I had to ask her, I was like, what is that? Because I had noticed from her live performance of Dear John that she had something on her arm and I didn't know what it was. And Selena Gomez wrote, a lyric on her arm going down her arm and then that started that tradition and so she would have a lyric going down her arm during the speak now tour and i thought that was really cool yeah i thought that was very sweet new information for some maybe or just me hey i i don't know everything about taylor swift you don't i'm not a taylor swift podcast no okay. i mean i think there are some people who have encyclopedic knowledge and that's great there's mm-hmm. some people who are just now getting into Taylor Swift. Mm-hmm. That's great, too. Yeah. I don't think there's a wrong way to be a Taylor Swift fan. If you put me to the challenge to do, like, a finish the lyric Taylor Swift song or game, I couldn't do it. I don't remember everything. But there's also, I mean, I think we are blessed to be huge fans of someone with such an extensive career. And I think it's great that, like you said, I mean, you, and I think part of the beauty of this podcast and, like, it's that we get to revisit all of the old st- older stuff, like the original Speak Now era. So it's like, if you were there when it happened, it's nostalgic. And if you weren't there when it happened, we're filling you in on what you missed. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's a win-win. Yeah, and plus, there's people like Anna, Day One, Day One, mm-hmm. who you're still learning new things. Oh, yeah. Had no idea. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, I had misheard lyrics. Yeah, so yeah, there's, absolutely. No, there's no perfect Swifty. Except for, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think we're all just I think we're all just happy to be here. And I think it's really cool. The community, the Swifty community has always been. And I feel like with her re-records, it's just getting bigger and bigger. And it's 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 so cool. I mean, I say this all the time, but I feel like it's a special connection you have with somebody when you have similar interests. But when it's when Taylor Swift is that similar interest, if you're not like if you're not in it, you don't get it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just it's it's different. It it really is. It's different. It does. It's different. (laughs) So do y'all want to know of different lyric changes that she's done before? Yes. So someone on Reddit, I had the time of my life fighting dragons with you, said, the bridge of Tim McGraw was originally, I'm back for the first time since then. I never looked you up because some trains you can't catch again. Got to leave it as it was. Picture to burn, we know that lyric. But also um, she said in an original my wife beat her wearing daddy with his new automatics. Gonna let you know how sorry you'll be. I didn't know that. I didn't eat. Whoa. The automatic being a gun. Yeah. Um, teardrops on my guitar. This is what I, this one really, really surprised me. Teardrops on my guitar. He's so damn funny. And that was changed for radio edit. But the reason that surprises me is because we know how controlled Taylor was. So it is surprising to me that she was even attempting to cuss then because she just wasn't allowed to none whatsoever you've got to be this perfect machine and you've got to do exactly what i tell you to do so makes me proud of her that that even back then it's like no i'm gonna do what i want to do she didn't and she did scale it back for radio but still good good job girl um a place in this world got my pink t-shirt on my old blue jeans instead of got the radio on my old blue jeans our song again cuss Damn, I didn't kiss him and I could have. (laughs) (laughs) And Superstar, I'm invisible and everyone knows who you are. Originally, I know that you were born in Arkansas. And then, um, I don't know if y'all know this from the song Me. Originally, there was Spelling is Fun. And then, (laughs) yeah, they ended up dropping that. Oh, I forget where I was recently where it was like somewhere in public and they were playing Me. And it played that part. It played the Spelling is Fun. And I was like, who is behind this music? Because that's not on, like, just Spotify. Oh, no, yeah, they took that one down. Like, somebody's phone is plugged in right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, now she changed the lyrics to Better Than Revenge, and we all support it. And I, I like the fact that 
it's hard being around for so long and things have evolved so much that she's allowed the grace to be able to change things. We're allowed to change our minds. You're allowed to change your lyrics. You're allowed to change your outlook on stuff. So I I embrace it. I embrace it and I love it. So good. So while we are in our Speak Now era, we are doing something a little different on social media that a lot of people have enjoyed. Anna is posting uh, about each song and saying, hey, give us your reaction. Give us your memories, your thoughts and feelings. Yeah. The different songs and we can read some of them on the pal- on the podcast. Yeah, I thought it'd be a really fun way to revisit Speak Now with our listeners. So I have a few here for Sparks Fly. Um, Georgia Louise Jackson said, Sparks Fly is my favorite Taylor song ever. When I was at school, I remember hanging out with a big group in a public place and Sparks Fly came on over the speaker. So I obviously said, this is the best Taylor Swift song. A girl in the group that I didn't know very well said, you're right, this is the best Taylor Swift song. And we've been best friends and Swifty partners in crimes for nearly 10 years now. Aww. We're doing two of the Liverpool dates of the Eras tour, and it's all because of Sparks Fly, which in our opinion is Taylor Swift's best song. I love that. That's so sweet. That's her Abigail. She met her Abigail. It's so, so sweet. I love so that. Cute. Oh, what Erica did next commented saying, Sparks Fly, the original version, was one of the first Taylor songs I learned to play and sing on guitar when I was 14. I'm now 30 and it's remained my forever favorite. And I usually sing the original lyrics by accident, (laughs) which is funny. That's Uh, cute. Kay Nagel 24 said, when I first had a crush on my now husband, we were 14 in 2010, Sparks Fly was a song that I heard that immediately reminded me of him. He has the best smile and he has green eyes. That song has since held a special place in my heart. And I cried like a baby when I got to hear it. When I got to hear it live at Nashville night one. We just got married last year, and he incorporated 10 different Taylor lyrics into his vows, ending them with, you are the best thing that's ever been mine. Oh, wow. So I wonder if he was with her at the concert, if they both liked that song, or if it was her and friends that went. I don't know. She didn't She didn't specify. Yeah, but uh, that would have been cool if they were there together. Yeah, but... I mean, it's cool anyway, but but that would have been very cool if they were there together, is what I'm trying to say. Right, yeah, so it's 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 cool to read through the through the comments if you want to contribute your own little story or read other people's stories about certain songs. Um, you can check out our Instagram at the 13 podcast, and we'll be doing that for every episode. And that does it for this episode of 13, a Taylor Swift fan podcast. Thanks for listening. Again, go follow us. And if you haven't already, subscribe to us on any podcasting platform you're listening to right now. And join us next time because we're going to be breaking down back to December. Thanks for listening to 13, a Taylor Swift fan podcast. Subscribe for free and leave a positive review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts.